The discussion of the origins of the Genshin gods is the most fascinating subsection of lore next to a rational explanation of why the Geo Archon statue is to pick Morax being shirtless. So today, I want to present my interpretation to the important lore tidbit presented by Nahida during the Archon quest. Who are the four descenders? But before I begin, I have several disclaimers given that the nature of Genshin lore is horribly volatile to the point objectivity stops being a thing. This is all just a theory, and nothing is indicative of the final product. Furthermore, with the introduction of Sumeru, we now know that all pieces of information in the lore are fallible, and can be manipulated by some unknown entity, so please keep that in mind. Anyway, let's begin. I want to open this topic with a very important claim that will set the pretense of everything else. First is that the information of there being only four descenders is Fatui information. Why this is important is because of how fallible Fatui information can be. The claim that the Traveler is the fourth descender is also a claim that was made by the Fatui, meaning that the ultimate objectivity behind that can be completely unknown. This will be important later, but just keep in mind that Fatui information can be manipulated as you've seen memories be altered as well during the Archon quest. We also know that data can be corrupted one way or another if you are residents from Tivat, and given there isn't proof that any of the 11 Fatui Harbingers aren't residents of Tivat or are descenders themselves, it is a fair assumption that any piece of information that circulates within the Fatui is subjected to the same rules of fallibility. So with that, let's begin. We should dissect the current theories that Nahida presents to us in the Archon Quest. Descenders were defined as entities that didn't originate from Devot and came here from an external planet. Nahida states that the Fatui have listed four entities, but the first to third being unknown to us. All we know is that the Traveler was listed as the fourth and their sibling is not amongst them. So let's begin theorizing first under the assumption that the Fatui are correct in saying that there are only four of them. Who would they be? Well, the first ascender was hypothesized by Nahida to be the Heavenly Principles. While this is speculation on her end, this isn't unfounded if we consider the lore we have in Enkanomiya. According to the book Before Sun and Moon, the primordial one named Phanis came to the world to make it anew. This androgynous creature birthed four shades, one of which was Istaroth, or the God of Time. This is the first throne that battled against the old rulers of the world, the Seven Dragonairs. The reason that this may be the first descender is because Enjo was adamant on finding the book before Sun and Moon as proof that Celestia is not from this world, meaning that the first descender recorded could very well be the primordial one. Additionally, when Ahira says that the heavenly principles have been dormant for a while, it is possible that these are the shades. We know based on the 2.5 story quest for A in the Raiden Shogun that the god of time was responsible for an incident several centuries ago, and that was the most recent activity of a celestial entity outside of the Archons. The god of time is also currently absent given that she was once a god overseeing Mondstadt, but that delegation was given to Venti. According to Nahida, they have been quiet for 500 years, after the incident with the Traveler. And what's even more fascinating is that the Heavenly Principles are referred to as an entity or a creature. Up until this point, the grand conception of the Heavenly Principles is that it was an abstract law. Given the name, principles, it felt more like a commandment, as though it was the laws of the world, but Nahida refers to them like a creature, meaning that the true purpose of the title Sustainer of Heavenly Principles is the key linchpin of what they truly are. The second descender is connected to the first one's tale, given that in the book before Sun and Moon, we get word of a great calamity that predated the Archon War. This was the war that came after the dissension of the second throne. We know next to nothing about the Second Throne, except that it could be a creature at a similar catastrophic power to Phanis. This is because this war caused a calamity that destroyed several ancient civilizations, one of which was the Seelie Kingdom. The Moon Sisters Arya, Sonnet, and Canon also mourned the laws of their Hall of Stars, thus showing a clash between the heavens and the earth. It is important for me, by the way, to mention that it is unknown who the current Celestia is, whether it is the first or the second. The second throne is not confirmed to be Celestia. In the current lore, it was even stated that the second throne was defeated according to the authors of the book Before Sun and Moon, and this is the largest piece of current confirmed in-game knowledge that we have about the thrones. While the book isn't gospel, it is not confirmed on any other sources that the second throne is the current ruler of Celestia. Additionally, it is more plausible that because Istaroth has an Ars Goetia name similar to the demon gods in Paimon, and Istaroth is the shade of the primordial one, naming conventions would argue that the current Celestia Venti, Zhongli, A, and Ahida answer to is connected to the first throne that descended, 
not the second one. But again, there is no cutthroat confirmation on either of them. If the sustainer of heavenly principles turns out to be a shade of the primordial one and has an Ars Goetia name, then we can safely theorize that the current Celestia is held by the primordial one and its four shades, and it just so happens that they are very inactive for some reason. Now we go on to the fascinating and unstable part of this theory. Who is the third descender, if such even exists? Our current knowledge of Genshin lore is too limited to make any confirming guesses, and there's not a lot of characters that are guaranteed to have interplanar travels. I do have four potential candidates for this, but it's important to keep an open mind, given that we know next to nothing about the Descenders in the first place. First is a much more plausible one. It's a character that we personally have never seen before, given that hardly any of the other characters would satisfy the current theme happening with the other three Descenders. Take note of the usage of the word throne and principles, and what the three theorized Descenders have in common. They have connections to angels. According to Wikipedia, the thrones, also known as Ophanim, are creatures that function as actual chariots of God driven by cherubs. They are characterized by peace and submission. God rests upon them. Thrones are depicted as great wheels containing many eyes, and reside in the area of the cosmos where material form begins to take shape. They chant glorious to God and remain forever in His presence. They mete out divine justice and maintain the cosmic harmony of all universal laws. Furthermore, the travelers have resemblances to a seraph. A seraph is a type of celestial or heavenly being originating in ancient Judaism, best characterized by their six wings. It's even possible that the word heavenly principles has ties to another kind of angel, the principalities. They are the first category of angels in celestial hierarchy to come to earth and interact with human beings. The principalities rule nations, groups of people, and institutions, but they also rule some groups of angels in heaven or on earth. They appear as messengers between the higher spheres and the lower angels. However, to say that the heavenly principles are principalities can be a stretch, given that we do know that they're referred to as thrones. So it's possible that the third descender could be another angelic creature altogether that we've never met before. However, it is important to note that this is just a speculation. And we have a rapid fire for the second, third, and fourth candidate for who the third descender could be. My personal candidates are, first of all, Alice, given she has extensive knowledge of world hopping and the borders of Devot. It is also partially confirmed through the scattered information we know about her that she has the ability to traverse worlds as evidenced by her 1.6 dialogue, in which she always tells Klee about other distant worlds. The third candidate is Dainsleaf, given his curious title as the Bowkeeper and his constellation the Snake Ring having ties to the Ouroboros. However, I'm less inclined to believe that Dane is a descender considering the Snake Ring constellation could simply have ties to his curse of immortality, while his Bowkeeper title ties him to the Ermin Soul. This would also explain why he has extensive knowledge about the characters, given that he has access to the Ermin Soul. The fourth potential one is Paimon, but that's more of a stretch all things considered. There's no conclusive evidence at the moment, and from what little we have seen about Paimon, she is more in tune with celestial inspirations than another motif entirely. Her design and space manipulation is in tune with Phanis and the Sustainer's motifs. So who's to really say? But honestly, at this point, anyone could be a descender. God, what if the KK in the Traveler's profile is just Kaidahara Kazuha? Kazuha is a third descender? Easy. Now, I do have some several notes that I want to point out about the Descender conversation. One is about the sibling. If the sibling's history as a far traveler was erased from existence, then it would make sense why the Fatui, an organization that would have only been formed after the travelers were trapped in Tevat, would not have knowledge of the traveler's sibling. My biggest guess is that they did have knowledge of the sibling being a descender, but similar to the Ruka Devada situation, such information was overridden by an external force, thus reducing the current data to only depict 4 instead of 5. Kind of like a cognito hazard that manipulates existing data. Or, more possibly, the sibling's history was just erased before anything could happen, or before the Fatui were even founded or researched into the matter. Second is, what if Fanis wasn't the first? This would actually help fill in the gaps a lot more. Consider this. This planet has already existed before Fanis, meaning that it's possible that Fanis wasn't the original creator. Would the Fatui, by extension, count the first creature that arrived to Devat as a descender by their own criteria? The god that created not humanity, but the Dragonairs and the old civilizations of the Bishops. Would they also count? By extension, that would mean that Fanis would get pushed to second descender and the second throne the third. But that's just another consideration for the future. 
Last point is, how would the Fatui know about this information? Consider the fact that most of the current knowledge we have about the time before the Archon War comes from books, more specifically, the Ancanomia books. And Joe even admits that this book is lost to time and it became amongst the Abyss missions to locate the book. Well, to answer this question, I do think that the Fatui would have access to this information given their status and the longevity of their current members. Currently, if you look at the Fatui Harbingers, we have a character that is theorized to hail from Conria given his lore, at least two characters that were approximately several hundred years old, two other characters that were referred to by an Archon as being on par with the gods, and Tartalia. Okay, maybe one of these things is not like the other. Regardless, not only is the Fatui privy to massive information networks, they're also certified abominations that defy mortal laws. They'd have the resources and the time in the world to investigate. So if there's anyone in the current state of Tivat that would have knowledge to this kind of information, it would be the Fatui. Oh, and about Aloy. We can always just say she's a fifth. Aloy's just happy to be here, you know? But that's it for me today. Who do you think the three other descenders are? If there are only three descenders. Anyway, my name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me. Also, before I end, I just want to do a quick plug of Gamersup's waifu cups. Get 10% off your next order of Gamersup's by using the code Aster and embrace the degeneracy. Alright, bye bye.